We'll go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 48. Uh, the uh, <coughs> book of Isaiah and the book of Matthew, you all read from him. Pretty sure. This is the last chapter in the book of Acts, and uh, seems like I know I was going one Sunday and all the snow and stuff, and like it took forever to get through the book of Acts. And, uh, <coughs> I know I say this pretty regular, I was going to get quite a bit going through it. Uh, Yeah, I'll start. I'll let me start the book of Acts, and I won't flip over to Isaiah. Uh, I'll try to read this whole chapter here. The book of Acts, and I don't know. I guess it's been so long since we've been here. If you remember, this uh, right, right, right before this was Paul was on the ship, and they shipwrecked, and uh, they uh, made it to this little island. Uh, floating in the water, floating on pieces. It says here that uh, uh, verse 44 there, chapter 27, the rest, some on board, some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they all escaped. They, they escaped all safe to land. And chapter 28, verse 1 says, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people shewed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. He shook off the beast and, to, and, went, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he had when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. And, and in the same quarters were possessions of the chief men of the island, whose name was Publius, whose received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. And so when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary and after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria which had wintered in the isle whose sign was Castor and Pollux and, and landing at Syracuse we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium and after one day the south wind blew and we came the next day to Petoli where, when, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days and so we went toward Rome. And from thence we and from thence when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Api Forum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto the men, unto, unto them, men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from, the, from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had aught, 
to accuse my nation of for this cause. Therefore have I called for you to see you and to speak with you because for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We, we neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came shewed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is, it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they, when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our father, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing, ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing, ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him out. Uh, I, I like this because Paul, uh, if you go back a few chapters, Paul was trying his best to get to Rome and he goes all the way back to him ready to die at Jerusalem and the Lord told him that he would make it to Rome and, and here this would be the last chapter, he, he finally made it to Rome and there's a lot in this even from here from the beginning of uh, them getting to this island and uh, these barbarous people uh, taking care of them, uh, give them a fire and all these things and help them and fed them. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say a whole lot about this, uh, about the viper. I know everybody's read these scriptures before, and I, this ain't necessarily what I wanted to teach on, but I, I mentioned this about the viper, and I've heard a lot of people uh, say things and heard it preached on and taught on about this viper latching on to Paul's hand. You can go back and read what Jesus said about the, the false doctrines of this yeah. world, and I, I just want to say this morning that. Uh, uh, you, you can be like this, and, 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 and uh, Jesus described the doctrine of the uh, of the Pharisees and things as poison, uh, as poison like from a snake. And, and, and you can take this right here and just know that uh, you were to be at a place now, you were to let this junk just bounce off of you. I'll just put it like that. That uh, uh, this thing last on the Paul's hand, he just shook it off. If you hear junk this day and time, just shake it off and go on, and don't let it. Don't let it get to you. Uh, don't let the poison get into your system and, 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 and kill you, in other words. And, and, but I, I like this chapter because Paul finally made it to Rome and he gets here and, 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 and the Jews come and want to talk to him. And, uh, they, I, 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 my mind went back to all the things we've read and studied throughout this whole book of Acts. And, uh, even up to the conversion of Paul and Paul going on and the Lord uh, directed him and, and, and him was setting up all this stuff and going and visiting these churches and I thought there, here it is the book of Acts and everything we've read and in my mind he went back to the reason I wanted to read the book of Acts as far as him turning the world upside down and, and uh, I believe chapter 17 those verses are and, and uh, all these things and, and, and you, you, you <coughs> It ends like this right here. Paul uh, trying to tell them once more, one more time, the Apostle Paul trying to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and once again, one more time, they, they didn't want to hear. They, 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 uh, it says uh, some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. And he went on to tell them what, what Isaiah had said. Uh, and I want to read to you. It's the same as what was just worded here, but I want to read it to you out of the book of Isaiah if you'll turn to chapter 6 in Isaiah. Just so you can understand that Paul was really a quote from Isaiah. And it, it's, it's worded about the same, but I want to read it anyway out of Isaiah. To you in chapter 6. 
Now, I, 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 don't want to, I won't read it all, just a few verses. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered and said, Until the cities be wasted without, without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Now, I, 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 let me just, I, I, I had this a different way, but I'll I, I turn, to, turn to 1 Corinthians. Hmm. I read this Wednesday night. I, I didn't know if I'd read it again, but I, I want to read this in 1 Corinthians. I was going away and uh, I had a place in Matthew, but let's just read in 1 Corinthians after that. Now, uh, you understand Paul was a quote in Isaiah to tell the Jews right there, hear all these things. You, you hear all this stuff, you see all this stuff, but you still don't understand it yet. You, you, uh, uh, verse 27 says, With the heart of this people is wax grows, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. And understand with their heart and should be converted that I should heal them. That's what Paul was to tell them. Quoting Isaiah that uh, you, you, you've come, uh, the Jews right before that, come and said that we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, for we know that every word is spoken against. And Paul went on to tell them they wanted to hear, so he told them. And just exactly what he told them, what I just read, you, you want to, you, you, you hear all these things, you see all these things, but you can't understand and you can't perceive what you're seeing because uh, of your mind, because of the way you are. And I, I want to read 1 Corinthians, I read this Wednesday night, opening up for Mitchell in uh, verse 2, or chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 6, and I, I know most of us was here Wednesday, and that's fine. Now you sort of understand, I guess, why this is on my mind. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6 says, I bet we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love Him. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. I, I won't read that again. Listen to what it says. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Uh, Lester says all the time, just how big is your God? And, and, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm an agrees with Brother Lester. I, I serve a big God, Lester. I, I do. I'm with you. I understand what you are saying. And, I, and I've got the Spirit that searches the deep things of my great big God. I, I, I believe that. Verse 11 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man? Say the Spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words of, of which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Listen to that, I'm going to read on. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that, that, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For, it, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as, un, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Mm -hmm. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? 
I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. I, I'll stop right there. And I, I, I'm not going to teach on, on, on the milk and the meat. I, I, surely everybody uh, remembers them scriptures and, and knows and, and understands the difference between milk and meat. But I like this right here. I, I, the way this is worded, I've read this before and taught on it. I know several times heard it preached on and different things. But ever since last week, I can't get these scriptures off my mind of going along with what Paul told them in the book of Acts and knowing that uh, it, 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 it's simple. It, it's just simple. If, if, if you don't understand sometimes the things that's going on, uh, I, I believe it's because of carnal mindedness. If, if sometimes you can't understand, uh, and I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about every word in this Bible. And I ain't talking about every single time I open my mouth. If you don't understand what's being said and what's being read, I, I'm talking about the spiritual things of God. I'm talking about whenever, uh, if you see somebody, I, 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 if you see some, if you see somebody getting happy. You say you take the last couple of Wednesday nights, and, and I wish everybody had been in a few Wednesday nights. It, 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 it may have been strange to some people to, to see what was going on. It may have been strange to, for us to be talking about a particular Wednesday night meet. What's the big deal about Wednesday? What, what happened in here? And, I, and, and my mind goes now to thinking about us uh, uh, talking and the need and revival. And Brother Kenny read it Wednesday night about being one mind and one accord. And, uh, if, if I'm carnal minded and you're spiritual minded we ain't going to be one mind one accord it ain't going to happen uh, if you want to understand uh, if you want to live by these scriptures right here and, and, and be a part of what these scriptures is talking about as far as uh, uh, the spirit of God but God hath revealed them unto us by a spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God if you want to be like that and you want to understand all these things, get a little bit more spiritual about things. Uh, get yourself, get your mind off this junk. You see, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's times if you don't want to be here, don't come. Amen. Uh, I, I try my best not to miss church, but if, if I'd rather be at the house, I'm going to stay at the house. Uh, there's a few, uh, I don't remember Rick, a couple months ago I missed a Wednesday night and Brother Rick called me and said, where was this? Well, I wasn't feeling the greatest. So I wasn't plumb sick, but I said, I just didn't feel good. I said, I notified to come and I just soon been at the house, so I stayed at the house. Uh, I can tell you, you stay at home every time you sniffle and sneeze. What I'm saying is, uh, if, you, if you want to get in this thing and understand it, uh, I, I, I know revival is a fixing to come to this church, and I, I, I don't know what it's awaiting on. I, I got a good idea, but I know it's awaiting on something, and I, I believe it goes right along with Kenny and reading that, and these scriptures, and everything that's been read and said and preached in this church. That we're, we're all going to have to get on the same page and, and, and we're to worship Him in spirit and truth is what the Bible says. And, uh, I, I believe one thing that's lacking in not only my life but maybe in this church in general is a little bit of spirituality. Amen. And what I mean by that is I think a lot of it is, is we're too busy of wondering this and too busy of wondering that and too busy of looking at this and too busy of asking this and uh, when it's all right here in front of us, if, if you need to, if you need to know if something's right or not, uh, David preached on it a, a whole lot years ago on trying the spirits. If you need to know if something's of God, uh, go to this book and you can tell. If you need to know if uh, if somebody's of God, spend a little time with them. It won't take you long to figure it out. Uh, if, if you need to know if, 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 if you want to get a little closer to God and, and be a little more spiritual then, then get a little closer to God and be more spiritual uh, I, I, I don't know uh, I, I, th just it, all this on my mind because the way Paul ended that a telling with their eyes they, they couldn't perceive nothing and, and to spiritually discern something I wrote this down read it Wednesday night to discern means to perceive or recognize that's how you spiritually discern something. You either perceive it or recognize it as being uh, something spiritual, something from God. And, and Paul tells them, 
You, it, it, with eyes you can't see, with ears you can't hear because of all this stuff. Because your heart is wax gross or wax fat or whatever it's word it is. It's, it's things that we bring in. It's things that we do. It, it, it's uh, not a uh, hundred times out of a hundred. It's our fault if we can't get the spiritual things of God. Uh, I don't mean by being spiritual you jump up and we all... Uh, it ain't all about running circles and it ain't all about shouting all the time. If it hits you, you need to do that. I'm just to say, I didn't want to try and say about being spiritual. I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about being, not, not being where Paul told these Jews they was. Uh, it, it, maybe if, uh, if, 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 if I teach on something or if Dave preaches on something or whoever stands up here and reads something and you have a hard time with it, uh, go home and, and study that a little bit. Or, or, or come to somebody and ask them. Don't, don't just say, well, I don't understand that, so it don't pertain to me. Don't do stuff like that. That ain't going to help you a bit. Dave used to say, when I first started coming to this church, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, it's been a long time now, Dave used to say all the time, I, I may have what just a few of us sitting here, Dave would say, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, go read it for yourself. And that was Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I'd go home and read it for myself. Amen. All the time. And then I got like, well, that's right. And that's good. And I understand that. I've been doing this wrong. According to the Bible, I've been doing this wrong. So I need to fix that. And Dave's right. And Dave said this was over here in this book. So I'd go read that in that book. And that'd be right. And that'd be there. That'd be something I've never heard. And instead of just saying, well, I guess he's right. But I don't know. I, it don't really matter. I'm gonna, I, I, I'll be alright. I'm going to get up good work in the morning. That ain't how it works. That ain't, that's, not me, that's, not, that's not seeing with your eyes and hearing with your ears spiritually. That, that'll put, that, that's, that's why, that's why they, they, verse 24 in the book of Acts said, some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. How many Sundays... Uh, you think when this church is packed and there's 150, 200 people in there, how many left that fell underneath these scriptures. We believe this church and uh, there'd be some that believe and some that believe not. And just go on. No, I'm concerned. It makes no difference whether they believed it or not. Uh, I like believing and I like knowing for myself. I don't like knowing it just because Dave preached it. I like knowing it just because I taught it. I don't like believing it just because Mitchell read it. I like believing and knowing for me. I, I've said this a bunch and they come up in conversation not too long ago. I, they ain't none of y'all going to stand there and help me when this thing's over. I love you every one, but they ain't nobody going to stand there and help me. They ain't nobody going to stand there and say, well, I, I always like to hear Jerry T. Sunday's guy. He's all right, Lord. That ain't going to that ain't gonna make, that, that ain't nothing. I, I've got to know this for me. I've got, I've got to perceive with my spiritual eyes and hear with my spiritual ears and decide for myself and know. I, I, I've got to know. You get yourself in a place where you can do it. It'll search the deep things of God. You won't always have to call the preacher when you got problems. You won't always... I have to ask the Sunday school teacher where this is at and that said, You'll know you've done perceived it with your eyes and heard it with your ears from the Spirit because it searches the deep things of God. I like it. I, I, I've, I've always liked the way these scriptures are worded right here in, 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 in Corinthians. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. I like His Spirit of dwelling inside me. That way I don't have to worry about it. it, it it's important to know that, 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 that you're understanding for you, that you're understanding what's right. And the only, way to, the only way to do that is to know that you've got the Spirit of God dwelling in you. And it's alright to, it, it, and I'll say this, it's alright to say things is wrong. If you know you've got the Spirit of God in you, know, every one of us in here can go home today and turn on them the, 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 the Christian channels on the TV and we could all sit there and mock and make jokes and say, well, that ain't right and that ain't right. No problem. Well, what are you going to do out here in the world? What are you going to do out here when it's, when it's not on the TV? Come on. Are you going to be able to, are you gonna be able to tell? Are you going to be able to say, hey, that ain't right. I ain't going to listen to that junk. That, that's wrong. Come on, Jerry. You, I, I ain't saying you have to go up to all these people and hurt their feelings, but you've got to know this is where people get mixed up. I've seen it. 
Way too many times the people I know, they'll, they'll, they'll think, all right, I, I, this is it. And then they'll get involved with this bunch, and this bunch will persuade them a little bit. And they'll, even, they even know that they'll tell you they know it's wrong. They'll tell you it was wrong 10 years ago. But then all of a sudden, they've got mixed up in this junk. That's just the same way Paul was shaking that uh, serpent off his hand. It didn't bother him. I, 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 you, if you can't walk through the middle of this junk and let it bounce off of you and not persuade you, I feel sorry for you. I don't know what you're perceiving and hearing with your spiritual eyes and ears. I don't know that you are. I know too many people. I know a fellow right now. I love him to death. I, I, I've known him for years and years. And he's got mixed up in this bunch. And, and I never would have thought it in my life. Never would have thought it. And he knows better. Knows, uh, 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 me and him's taught. He's preached against some of the things that, that, that that's going on in this church he's in. And he's right in the middle of it now. And I think to myself, my, I don't understand that, but I do understand it. His ears, is, his ears are dull of hearing and he can't see no more like he used to could see. I mean, that's a big problem. I, 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 just, I read this and think about, like I say, Paul will tell them uh, how he ended the whole... Uh, and, and I went back and done some research on the book of Acts and, and most of us probably know this. That, that Luke actually wrote the book of Acts, wrote the words down, wrote, um, Luke supposedly followed Paul and wrote all that down. But uh, how they ended the book of Acts with him telling the Jews that this is the way you are and this is the way it is. And then that, and that was it. I, I want to read, read this scripture from Matthew pretty bad. So let's flip over here to the book of Matthew chapter 13. I ain't going to read all this. I just want to read sort of here in between. Matthew chapter 13 this is the parable about the sower and the seed I just want to re- I, I think sometimes we miss this part here in the middle in Matthew chapter 13 everybody remembers the parable about the sower and the seed uh, the word of God and, and, and the things that happens to the word when people hear it and, and uh, uh, Matthew chapter 13 verse 10 says and the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables and he said and he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whosoever hath not from him shall be taken and away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and, and have not heard them. And he goes on and tells the disciples exactly what the parable of the sower and the seed mean. I ain't going to read that. I've read these scriptures a bunch and always I I remember this. Him was stopping and telling the disciples. I asked him, but it's basically the same thing. Even Jesus quoted Isaiah right here. But it it gets down to it that that they have, uh, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. And, I, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. There's a certain closeness that comes from being, uh, from being a child of God. That, that it goes right back to that spirit of searching the deep things of God. It goes right back to... Uh, uh, I, now, I, 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 I promise you, I try my best. I, I don't want to sound boastful. I don't want to... Clay, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm some big something, but I, I, I thank God for the Spirit of God. 
that when you get some of these meetings, and I'm not talking about this building that we're in, I'm talking about we get some of these revivals, and you get people uh, testifying, people uh, saying certain things. I, I thank God that there's enough of the Spirit of God in me that I can sort of figure things out pretty quick. I, I, I like that. I like knowing that uh, if somebody comes, and I, I, I've had people... Dave, taught, Dave preached a while back on, on prophecy and prophesying. And that, that was the... Uh, the world needs to hear that message that he preached on, on prophesying. I, I've had people try to come up to me and prophesy to me. Uh, and if you wait, you uh, just uh, just shake that off. It'd be like that beast hanging on pot. Just shake that off when it happens to you. But if, if, if there was some big uh, person coming in this church this morning and said, hey, I'm going to prophesy this morning, Jeff, you're going you to be a... a you, you gonna, you, you, you gonna be some big something, and Greg, you gonna uh, do this, and and Jack, you're gonna do this, and that's what they do. They, that's what they do now. I, I, I wonder uh, if this church was packed like at one time was. I wonder if somebody came in this morning and, and really started on that how how we would take it. I, I wonder. I've had it happen, and I think I I had a fella tell me one day, me and Michelle one time we was gonna have a bunch of kids. Told me and her that before we ever had Carter. Told uh, same one that someone came down there. He said, "Do you want?" He said, "I don't see kid." He said, "I don't see a kid. I see a bunch of kids." And and I, and I promise you, I was nowhere near where I am today, living my life for God. I promise you that. And I remember thinking, "Well, that's, I don't know about all this." Seems sort of weird, but I don't know. All these other people seem to think his fellas, right? And I remember going home and thinking, I, I just, I, you know, I was saved, and, and, and I wasn't, I, I, I promise you, I was nowhere close to my life with God like it is today, but I do remember thinking, I don't believe that's the way God's going to set this thing up. And just so and behold, guess what? That ain't the way God set this thing up. Uh, and you know what the Bible said about that? Yeah. Do you know people will take the person's word over God's word? Yeah, man. Man. Yeah. They respect man more than they do God. Yeah. They'll take the words of a false prophet rather than to take the word of God because yeah. they think that person to be a good person. All the false prophets, if you read in the word of God, was well thought of of right. the fathers of old. That's right. They were liked by men. Amen. Yeah. Now you better get a hold of what I'm fixing to say. The Bible said if any man come to you prophesying yeah. and telling you that God said this, and it didn't shortly come, now he yeah. said shortly come to pass, Amen. that man was to be taken out and stoned to death because he prophesied about the lies of his own heart. Amen. 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 If they tell you something that don't come to pass, they're a false prophet. Amen. Better read the book. Amen. Say, oh, maybe they missed it. They don't just miss it. No. Come on. Amen. A lie's a lie. True. Come on. <laughs> if I come in this church and I told Thomas, praise God, he was he was God's going to bless him with a million dollars, and it didn't shortly come to pass, I'd be a liar. Bless him, Lord. But you see, I'm not going to tell you that. People call and say, come and pray over my house and pray that God would bless you. Let me give you some scripture. God's not going to bless you unless you're living for God. Amen. If you want a blessing, live for God. Amen. God will not bless over sin. Let's get this right. People living like hell and professing that they've been blessed by God. That's a lie right out of hell. Amen. God don't bless over sin. And if God does, then the God that they're serving is a liar. Can I get an amen? amen. For the God that I serve cannot lie. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Hey amen. These people running that jaw, amen, and telling a whole lot of false stuff, and people eat it up because they're not spiritually yeah. concerned. Yeah. And if you want discernment, and if you know what the Spirit says, said, so how do I get spiritually discerned? My God right here it is. Amen. He said in the 63rd chapter, verse, Amen. Of the sixth chapter of the book of John, my words, they are spirit. Read it. Yeah, Boy, I tell you, I can preach on that. 
Everybody says, well, every <coughs> I'll preach in a minute. Okay? I got some to preach. Go right along with everything. I've been up. I was up late last night. I was up this morning early. I've read more of my Bible in the last two days than I have in, in, in three months. Amen. But I'm telling you, God's a moving and this is the last call. People better get ready. They better get in this thing. And when the Lord comes, I'm going to tell you right now, by the authority of God's Word, when Jesus Christ steps out on the clouds of glory and the trumpet sound, your sins better be under the blood. Amen. Yeah. 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 This, this halfway stuff ain't going to get you. Yeah. Amen. And these people that profess to be saved and out here living like hell, amen, if the Lord Jesus comes amen. and catches them in that yeah. mess, they're hell bound. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I've got Scripture to back it up. Can I get an amen? But whenever Jesus comes, those that belong to Him will be washed and clean and ready to go. Can I get an amen? But the rest of them will still be out here just doing any old thing because they do not hear the voice of God. I'll go one step farther. The Bible said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Can I get an amen? Have you ever heard the voice of God? Have you ever heard the voice of God? Do you know how sweet it sounds? Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Amazing grace, how sweet it is. That saved a wretch like me. Amen. I once was lost, but now I'm sad. So I found. Amen. I'm blind, but now I see. I've heard the voice of God. That's the first thing I heard before I ever knew the Word of God. Amen. He spoke to me personally, knew who I was. Yeah. I'm afraid there's a whole lot of church members God's never spoke to. Amen. 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 I've read about Paul. It's got deep in the last two or three days. Yeah. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, these people prophesy, man. Prosperity. You know the human flesh, they like money. Yeah. Amen. They like to be royal and, and, and have authority and they like praise God money in the bank, amen. And these people come in and start teaching and preaching about prosperity and telling you how you're going to gain things and this stuff, you eat it up. Thank the Bible. Bless you, man. I can tell you this morning, praise God, that everything your hands will touch will prosper. And that will be the book. But you know what it will take? It will take you keeping the commandments and His statutes for you to be touched. Can I get an amen? That's the Bible. The Bible said if you don't, you'll be cursed. Some of you are looking at me like I've got two heads. I don't really care. People's are messing up and don't care. Huh? Preachers are teaching and are preaching lies right out of the pulpit. I don't even call them preachers. False prophets. And the world is eating them up. Best people it's ever been. They like them. I know a fellow right today, praise God, that goes and drinks with these boys and they think he's the best preacher they are in the country. Amen. Surely, dude, there's no condemnation. Amen. God, I tell you, boy, got quiet now, ain't it? But you know what the Bible said? The Bible said those that preach the gospel and the truth would be hated. Yeah. They'd be hated for His name's sake, even kill. Right. Read the Word of God. Amen. The disciples wasn't well thought up. Paul wasn't well thought up. Uh, Read the book. Amen. I've been reading about what he went through. Yeah. Hmm. My God, I'm, I'm going to hug. Listen, Oh, no. There's a fella told Cliff McCoy the same thing. There's a fella told me that. Oh, it's amazing to me how people just get right out of the Word of God and go right on. He told me, he said this fellow prophesied to him, told him he was a healer. That's what he said. This same fellow tried to, tried to school me on the gifts of God. That worked out about five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> but this man, he told me, Thomas, he said that, God, that a fella come from upstate down here and, and prophesied to him and looked him right in the eye and told him, said, you're going to confound doctors. You are a healer. 
He said, I'm getting ready to go to the hospital. I said, what are you going to the hospital for? He said, I'm going to start at the first floor and I'm going to heal them right on out the top. I said, you're a false prophet. <laughs> he got offended just like all the rest of them. He got offended, but that ain't Bible. You see, what that man was was a confuser. Right. He was a false prophet and he was going to confuse a lot of people. Do you know these people that profess to be healers don't even know who to lay their hands on and who not to? Right. Did you know that? And you say, preacher, you're talking out of your head. I'm telling you that if you've got the power to heal, then you know who to touch and who not to. Can I get an amen? Come on! You know, the Bible said, have you read the book? Do you know the book? Are you spiritually discerned? Bless Do you know what the Bible yeah. said? The Bible said that there is a sickness that's on the death. And he said, I'd have you not to even pray for that. You see, there's people in the hospital right now that's getting ready to make their journey home. And you go in and profess you're going to be healed. And they die. You deceive their people. Amen. 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 But when God breathes, and you know God's breathed on them, and praise God, you tell their people, amen, that God's touched them. And they get up and go on, amen. That's a witness for God. But you go to pray for these people, amen, you ain't got enough God in you to even know the difference. You better keep your mouth shut. Amen. That man's a false prophet. Amen. And how easy we forget this stuff. Yeah. Do you know people? I got in a bit deep conversation. I used to be pretty hot-headed. I get into deep conversation pretty quick. It didn't make no difference. Now God stopped me a little patience and I sort of wait and listen to what I want to know what they're saying, really. There's a guy here in the year 2000 predicted that the Lord was a coming. This man has predicted the Lord to come for three different times and he's missed it every time. And do you know this crazy bunch is still listening to this man? Yeah, yeah. We were building a house over in Aho. And praise God, we was over there on top of the mountain and they left me there to talk to the inspector. Bad mistake. <laughs> you see, he was getting ready for the Lord to come because this man told him he was coming at such and such a day. He must have had inside information because according to the Word of God, the angels don't even know. He might have had ESPN. They have got off the TV. But he got out and started that junk and I just told him, He's a false prophet and everybody that follows him is false. He called me crazy when we got in the book. But how easy it is for people to follow and people just go on, they just mark it as he made a mistake. And that's a lie. The last chapter of the book of Romans, we're getting Romans here for long. The last chapter of the book of Romans said to mark these people right. that caused division among the children of God and to note them. <laughs> we ought to write their name down in a little book, amen, and know who they are, right. what they're doing, and praise God, don't be deceived by them again. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Did you say whatever you want to. Just go on and do what you got to do. But I'm telling you right now, the Lord's coming. Amen. When He comes, He better find you doing what He said to do, or you're going to miss it. And I'm not talking about horseshoes or hand grenades. This ain't a big miss. It ain't getting close. It's hitting the mark. Yeah, man. If you read the, what, if you listen, have you ever listened to what Jerry's taught? Have you ever listened to what's been preached in this church? Bless him, all man. Or do you just take bits and pieces and then make up your own way? Help him, all. You see that a lot, don't you? This brother taught on sin. And back in the old Bible, when the archers missed the mark, yeah. they called it sin, wasn't it? Yeah. Anytime you miss the mark, it's sin. Amen. It ain't a mistake. Amen. Quit, quit putting a pretty word over it. Just call it what it is. It's sin. Amen. When you miss the mark, it's sin. Amen. So therefore, when you sin, what do you have to do to get right with God? Yeah. Repent. 
Amen. You know what repentance means? Turn away from. Amen. So you know what you got to do? You got to lay that mess down and turn to God and go to walking for God. And I can, Amen. I'll preach on that here after a while too. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, when you change, things in your life is different. Amen. When you get a hold of God and you truly repent. That ain't a part of your life anymore. Amen. You get rid of it. And there's some things that happen in people's life for God to establish them. Yeah. Amen. You gotta be established That's right. in this book. It ain't all known just right off the bat once you give your heart to God. You're gonna make mistakes. Well, I ain't talking about messing up and tripping up with things of the world and then coming back to knowing that you done now this is the key. Knowing that you done wrong. The Bible said, without chastisement, their bastards are not sunk. Meaning they do not have a heavenly father. Read the book for yourself. Amen? Come on. Amen. The problem is, Jerry, you teach, you preach, and when everybody will take it until you hit something they don't like. Bless you. And instead of getting the truth, they hate it. Amen. You. Paul even told him at one place, and I, I told him. He said, Before you'd have plucked your eyes out and given them to me with me not even asking you. Yeah. That's what they thought of him. He said, And because I have told you the truth, I have become your enemy. Amen. The truth calls them to hate. Amen. But these, these people that are telling this junk and professing that God said this and God said that, everybody will just do it and all, and then when it don't come to pass, they just think, well, maybe they missed it. That's a fellow told me several years ago, he said he's trying, he's trying to buy the building up here at the ABC store for a church. I said, have you prayed about it? He said, yeah, God said it's mine. Well, I said, go get it. He said, but they want $500,000 for it. I said, what's $500,000 to a God that we serve? Yeah. That ain't nothing, is it? After God, if, if God showed him, I don't know. Anyway, they didn't try to buy the building, then you know what happened? Corruption came in the yeah. Ash County. And you can say whatever you want to, church members voted it in. You see, we live in the Bible Belt. I said church members voted it in. And you can go down West Jefferson, tell them what I said, it's on, it'll be on YouTube, it won't make a difference. Church members voted it in. For revenue. We've been through this. We've been through this all week at work. He didn't say money was sin. He said the love for money was sin. Amen. When you go to forsaking the good things of God to make a dollar, you sin. Amen. You fell in the category with the world and the and the, the scary part about it is the Bible said they're blinded by the gods of this world. That's right. Most of them can't see past their nose. Amen. Amen. I see things coming to pass right now that I'd have never thought I'd ever seen, Keith. But we're living in it, the last moments of time. Preachers leaving their families and shacking up and still trying to preach in the pulpit. You know the sad part about it is? That's a whole lot of the congregation that go right along with it. Amen. And you call that spiritually concerned the sermon? Tell me where you're at. Bless the Lord. Got quiet man. Amen. I know a church right now, praise God, and I'm telling you something that I know. I, I preached on that last night. Bless you, telling you things that we have seen and that that we've heard. And you reach the seat, not our witnesses. Randy, I know for a fact, I saw a young man, a young preacher, get right with God, got saved, didn't he keep? In a tent revival. And the only message God had given me was confess your sins. 
and he'll be faithful and just to forgive you those sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. This young preacher got right with God. He pastored a church for three years. God right with God. Amen. Can't give his right. And God him began to confess. And that church backed him, ooh and all, this and that, for three years. And every night after church, he'd go home, get on the computer, and watch porn. Yeah. And he began to praise God, confess that. You know what they done? They called, they they battered him after he got right with God till he lost his job. And they kicked him out of the church. <laughs> and one of the deacons come to me said, what do you think about it? I said, you're the craziest bunch I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you back a man, praise God, he was living like hell. But the moment that he gets right with God and confesses his fault and gets up in front of the congregation and admits his wrong, amen. you turn on him like a pack of wolves and throw him out. Can I get an amen? amen. You, whoo, who are you following? Bless you, Lord. Who are you following? Praise God. I'd rather really have a man standing in my pulpit that they man have got right with yeah. God and you. Amen. amen. I'll try to help you. I'm going to teach you some of this stuff. Amen. You see, this is the kind of stuff. This is meat here. If you go to eat meat and get you some protein in the Word of God, yeah, uh, you'll be you'll be spiritually discerned and established. Yeah. Amen. Established. How does it feel, Renee, to be established? Amen. Amen. Don't it feel good that whenever things come into your life and the pains in your body, don't it feel good that you know that the God that you trusted with your all being, Amen, is able to reach down and touch with one little finger and things is okay? How does it feel this morning, child of God, Amen. to know that the God you serve is real and can answer prayer? Amen. Praise God! That tears me up. I can't help it. ain't a popularity contest. It ain't getting gained. It's about winning souls and getting people ready to leave this world. Amen. Over the book of Ephesians, he said, by the cleansing of the water, which is the Word of God, he cleansed them and presented them to himself a church without spot and blame. Amen. The Lord is getting us ready. To go home. Amen. Amen. Don't be fooled for this junk. And I'm going to tell you how double-minded people are. He began to read about old Paul over there and he entered into a place of barbarian. A lost race of people. I'll tell you how un undiscerned people are. Even people sitting in the church look for a sign. The Bible said they'd be no trying to give it. Same as Jonah, three days and three nights in the belly of the whale. Same as Jesus, three days in the heart of the earth. But they seek for a sign. They was looking, and when Paul reached into the firewood, and the viper came out, one of the most venomous snakes in the world, and latched onto his hand, Paul just shook it off into the fire. Who look at it. Yeah, hmm? yeah They said he was a murderer, and, and he was going to die. Snake beating, he's going to die. He's a murderer. And in the same breath, they watched him receive it, and there wasn't no swelling, nothing happened to it. Then he was a god. Yeah. Yeah. People can't make their mind up what they believe. Yeah. Huh? Come on. Elijah said, Well, I preached it the other day. Joshua said, if God be God, serve Him. Yeah, mm -hmm. Choose you this day in whom you'll serve. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. John, uh, Elijah told him over there, 450 prophets of faith. He said, do whatever's good in your sight. Amen. If Baal be God, serve Baal. Yeah. If God be God, let's serve God. He said, whichever God answers by fire, he said, we'll serve Him. He said, you go first. Yeah. 
I believe he stepped back and grinned. Because he knew what they had was false. Amen. See, when you get in this book, you know what's right and what's wrong. And if you turn against this book and go after the things of the world, you need to get right with God. Amen. Pretty simple way. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and teach it. Yeah. Brother, I, I ain't going to apologize, but it, it just tears me up. Amen. These false prophets are leading people straight to hell. Amen. Amen. That's the old, that's the fellow told Brother Cliff McCoy, we was a tent meeting, and, and that's the same night this fellow talked to you was going to school me on the gifts of God. I'd appreciate it if you didn't try to school me on anything. Because the schoolmaster is Jesus. Amen. And I know him personally. This fellow told Cliff he had an evil hedge around his head. He looked at me and I said, oh, his hair has been like that for years. <laughs> I just went on. Amen? Amen. These people told me that they could see an evil aura over top of people. Yeah. Now, I can tell you right now, I know what is right with God or not. And you say, how do you know? I know you by the fruits you bear. That's right. I know you by your lifestyle. I know you by your mouth. Amen. Amen. It'll tell on you. Amen. Yeah. This man told us, sat there for 30 minutes and told me he had a gift of reading minds. I know better than that. Because if he'd have been reading my mind, he wouldn't have talked to me. Yeah, Amen. Because I'm thinking, how crazy do you think I am? Mommy, mommy. Said he couldn't couldn't charge for it. It was a gift. Wasn't very good at it because what I had on my mind, praise God, was affinity. Amen. Come on. Amen. Let's tell it like let's just tell it like this. Read the word of God about soothsayers and witchcraft and the things of this world. Read about it. Amen. Divine spirit. Yeah. I won't get in on that. Are you going to I'll try to help. I I'm I'm done as far as the scripture, but over here the that last place, two scriptures are in the book of Acts that I read. Verse 24 says, And some believe the things that are spoken, and some believe not. And verse 29 says, When they had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And I, I was thinking that David was talking. Uh, you, you can leave here today believing whatever you want to believe. It, it don't make no difference to me. It ain't going to make no difference to David. It just ain't going to make much difference as what's well, going to continue to go on. But, but every Sunday, people leave this church believing exactly what they want to believe. Uh, my mind keeps going back to Kenny and say, uh, reading that Wednesday night about being one mind, one accord. Now, I ain't saying we're going to agree on every single part of the Scriptures. That ain't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if... if, 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 if the, the, these things that, that I don't understand all this book, these things that, that, that I might see different to go about than what you might see different, that, that, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm talking about as far as the, the Bible as a whole and knowing that, that uh, a, a white lie is not alright and, and taking something small uh, is still stealing. Or, 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 uh, uh, let me just put it to you this way. All these Sundays that people's coming up here and being healed, the people are getting anointed with the oil. If you leave here every Sunday not believing and wondering in your mind and saying, I, I don't know about that, then you fall into this category right here of these Jews. If you, if you see these young ones are coming up here on Sundays or Wednesday nights and getting saved and you leave here saying, I don't... I don't know. I don't know if that's really how that works. You fall into this category and not know. You're seeing this stuff and not perceiving it. Uh, believe here today and know what you believe. And if you're having a hard time, I, I, I say this, I, I ain't said it so much here in the last little while. David doesn't say it. Go on, read the Bible. Just, just read it. Uh, you don't need me to explain it to you. You don't need David to explain it to you. If you're saved, go home and read it and pray. 
Uh, if, if you get in something real deep, call me. I, that's fine. I ain't saying don't, but uh, go on and read your Bible. That's if if you know you can't do nothing hardly anymore. All this stuff. We put some shelves together the other day for this woman. We was working on her house. I mean, simple. I had to look at them. It was simple. I mean, nothing to them. Man, we couldn't do a thing without the instructions to them. I mean, simple. Just to know how simple they was to put together after reading the instructions. It was so simple. It's too, you had four legs. These racks slid down. They wedged down on our simple. Well, I did a simple process, but we had no clue until we started reading the instructions on how to get, even start to do it. Man. You ain't going to have a clue how to live this life unless you start with the instructions. How are you going to know if, if anointing with oil is right or not? not you, you, you can't believe it just because we're up here don't. How are you going to know if it's right? Because the Bible says it today. Amen. I know that because I've read it. That's why, that's why I, I agree and know it's right. I, I have read it. Somebody still ain't never read that verse. Uh, there's a lot of you just going along with this and ain't never read nothing. <coughs> read uh, I, I, These Jews probably wouldn't have near a harder time if they just know what the, what the, what the Bible said. Same way that I, I'm going to leave here to know what I believe. I, I heard it's all do the same. But uh, I, I do ask for your prayers. I don't know. Uh, now we're done with the book of Acts. I thought we might go through the New Testament, but there's other things on my mind, so... Uh, I ask you all to pray on for me to know what to do. But I, I, I'm done.
Everybody else leave them. Father, for the message, Lord, the teaching we've heard, Father God, just thank you so much, Lord, 
God, we just can't thank you enough for what you do for us, Lord. Be with each one here today. God, if it be one, Lord, that don't know you and the free part of your sin, or just slipped away, God, just reach down and touch them. Father, you don't give them a promise of tomorrow, Father. This could be the right opportunity, God. It's this little church to go and prosperous the way you'd have it to go. Each one of us move up a little closer to you, God, to get ready for revival, Father. We know it's a coming, Lord, and we just can't wait, Father. We need it so bad, God. Just thank you so much, Lord, be with those in the rest homes and the hospitals and those that's lost loved ones this week. Father, reach down and touch from God. Take the money and use it the way you'd have it to be used, God. Lord, be with Brother David in the after service. God, give him the words you have him to say and us accept your hearts to understand, Lord. Just help us to make it through another week, Father. We know we can't do it without you, Father. We just ask it all in the holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Lisa, you got any announcements? Okay. You got Michelle? You want to tell everybody? Say what you tell. Ebenezer is scheduled to come uh, February the 24th. Come here and they're going wanting us to skip Sunday school that morning so they can sing and they're going to do some things for us. And I uh, think want to have a meal after service. A covered dish. A covered dish that same morning, February 24th. And then their items to collect this month was cereal and canned fruit or like um, the little things of fruit, the little um, cups, the little fruit cups. And she said cereal, they go through that, the, after we took all that other cereal that she messaged me a couple of weeks ago, they were down to 15 boxes of cereal. So I know, I know they go through a lot of cereal. So. Any birthdays and anniversaries since the last time I was here? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. We got a thank you card here. It says, uh, during a time like this, we learn how much our family and friends really mean to us. Your expression and of sympathy will always be remembered. Thank you so much for the beautiful flowers honoring our precious wife and mother. Your prayers have brought us comfort. We appreciate you all. Love, Tony, Jackie, Elaine, and Greg. That's uh, Greg's family. We got a card here. We're going to pass around for everybody to say.
Thank God for being in the house of the Lord today. Uh, I appreciate each one that's here. I appreciate more the Word of God than anything. Uh, the Word, it teaches me that when I'm wrong, I've got an answer. It teaches me how to get out of it. it. Tells me how to get right with God and how to make it to heaven. Amen. You see, that's the whole goal of the Word of God is to get us from here to glory. It's our road map. Jerry talked about instruction manual uh, for that little desk. It might look simple, but when you try to do it without knowing, it's pretty difficult. And it's hard to live a Christian life if you don't know the truth. It's hard to walk for God or know the difference if you don't know what you're fighting against. Amen. Uh, I've been told that you shouldn't ask questions in these other religions. I want to know what they believe. No harm in asking, are they? I like to know what they believe because I know what I believe. Amen. I like to be a help to them. If you pray just a few minutes over in the book of Second Corinthians, you'll find the the verse that kept coming to my mind for three days. Um, if you go to 2 Corinthians down about the 13th chapter, 
very familiar scripture. And I want to read to you, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm glad that the Lord's are coming. I've stood in the pulpits, Brother Kenny, for almost 30 years now and preached the coming of the Lord, be it Billy Joe. I've done my best to get people in this thing, to keep them in this thing, to keep them walking, keep them praising God, to make it that one day when the trumpet sounds that they'll be found right with God. For the Bible said over in one place, He said you'll be found and weighed in the balances and found wanted. Amen. You want to have Jesus on your side. Praise God. But you just pray just a few minutes. God being my helper. The Scriptures come to me over there in the Word of God and the Bible began to speak about how God is not slack concerning His promises as some men count slackness. The Bible said He's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, that's the reason the men of God began to preach the Word of God and to preach the truth. It wasn't God's will that any Randy would die without Him, but that we all might make it to glory through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? That we all could have a better life and a better understanding that we all could uh, live, amen, the way God said to live. And you say, preacher, you can't live it. I say you can. Amen. I say you can. You can live it. You can live by it. You can be victorious over the world. Amen. The Bible said over in 1 John about the 5th chapter, amen, He told him, He said, Who is He that overcometh the world, but that He that believeth the... Amen. Shoo! And the only begotten Son of God. Come on. Them that believe are already overcome. Anybody know what I'm preaching? But Apostle Paul became... He come down to a religious crowd. He preached to the Roman churches. He preached to the church of Corinth. Amen. He preached to Corinthians. And amen, he began to tell them how they were living and what they were doing. Amen. Now you see, I told you once this morning, I don't have to be a judge. Amen. I know by the fruits you bear whether you're living where God's Word said you ought to be living or not. I know by the Word of God whether I'm where I'm supposed to be or not. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. I don't have to judge you. Our life tells on us every day. Amen. I've been in funerals, Randy, with people that I've known all their life. Knew, amen, their life didn't add up with this book. Never been in church a day in their life. Never mentioned the name of Jesus. Never lived right. Can I get an amen? And they stand in the pulpits over the casket and the coffin and the bodies laid out before the family. And they begin to tell what an upstanding citizen they were. How good a person they was and how they loved God. I even looked around to see if I was in the right funeral or not. Can I get an amen? You see, the lives of human beings are sending our people to hell. You see, this is the way the book states it. Not everybody's going to heaven, amen. They just a chosen few. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. Can I get an amen? There's a hand-picked crowd by the Lord Jesus Christ that's going to make it to heaven. And that's the only one. And those that's hand-picked by God Almighty, when the Lord comes, will be a living for God. Can I get an amen? It ain't maybe. It ain't, it ain't a myth, amen. Those that are going to be going to heaven will be found in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing short of that's going to make it. Now this is Bible. I'm going to preach the Bible this morning. I'm glad to see you at church. Church won't get you there. But I'm glad to see you here so you hear the Word. Amen. Amen. You know what comes to my mind, Randy? Uh, yesterday and this morning got up with it on my mind. You remember we? You remember that old big mare you you got who grinded over to through the go through the flatwoods one day. And man, we just going up through there. And my God, I'm telling you, we we just going up through the mountain. Randy hasn't got right with God. Amen. But God is touching you. I can remember the valley and I can almost see it today in my eyes. We you going up the valley over there, coming to the top of the mountain, come through a little curve and start up a mountain. 
We started swinging, amen, and wading through deep water. And then the Spirit of God come down through there. That old horseshoe's around us a bucket up and down. And all at once, the anointing of God come down that valley like a sweet smell of the Savior, amen. And when it settled, that old horse even calmed down, didn't you? You remember that? Randy looked at me and he said, My God, did you feel that? I said, That's Jesus, amen. He said, My old horse even felt it. You will or believe even the animals has got more sense than a lot of people. When God passes by, can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Even Balaam was a riding the ass over there. God told him not to go down there. Amen. But he sat her up and went on for the riches of this world. And the Bible said she stopped. Amen. And Balaam began to whip on her to make her go. The Bible even said she clapped. Got her up, amen, and she brushed his foot against the wall yeah. to keep her passing by. Amen, he kept a whipping on her. Amen, all at once God opened the hell, amen, the little donkey's mouth, and she began to tell him uh, that was a steady before him uh, was the angel of the Lord uh, with his sword drawn. Uh, glory to God. Yeah, <laughs> Amen. Did you know God gave even the beast a burden? Those little donkeys and little asses that the Bible calls in the Word of God, they give them more sense than to hurt themselves. You won't make one of them do something that he thinks it's going to hurt itself. It won't wade through water. It can't see the bottom. And praise God, it won't cross the creek if you don't. If it don't want to, it'll sit down in five of you can't push it across. I don't care how big it is. Come on! God put something in it, Greg, an instinct that it knows where the harm's at. People don't even know that anymore. Did you know that? Amen. Bless him, Lord. Can I preach just a minute? I, I've got to preach just a minute. The reason Paul began to preach it was because God's mercy. How many times has God visited you? And I'm going to preach because I, I've got a message in the 13th chapter. How many times has God visited you in your lifetime? How many times did you truly listen? How many times did God visit you and things stayed the same because you weren't willing to listen to God? How many times? I, I'm, I, I get snowing. This may be my last day, Randy, but praise God, if it is, I'm going to give it my all. Amen? Amen. Come on! I'll Amen. preach it like it's my last. How many times has God visited you? How many times has God's man preached a message that pricked your heart and you never moved? Can I get an amen? How many times? Can you think of some today? Can you think of things that's still in your life this morning that the old man of God preached against and you just covered it up and went on? Said, oh, that old man don't know what he's talking about. Paul went through the same thing. I want to read this to me. Paul had sent letters to these people. Paul had sent young preachers to these people to tell them the truth. Amen. The Bible said in the 13th chapter, the Bible said this, he said, this is the third time I am coming to you. Three times this is the third time that Paul came to these same people. The Bible said, Amen. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before and, for, and foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent now I write to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other that if I come again I will not spare Listen. since these seek the proof of Christ speaking in me which you which to you upward is not weak but he is mighty in you for though he was crucified through weakness yet he liveth by the power of God for we also are weak in him but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Paul began to preach and he said, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How 
Now that Christ Jesus is in you, except ye be reprobate. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Amen. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Amen. I'm going to back up just a minute. Paul told him, he said, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Can I get an amen? amen. I thought about it. We're living in a day and time where everybody you meet on the street professes that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. You meet everybody up and down the valley all over the world that profess to be saved by the grace of God, but their life has never changed. Amen. Paul just told them, said, prove yourself. Amen. Examine it. Check it out. Are you living by the Word of God? If you're not, then you're all right with God. Can I get an amen? You say, we're all available. Amen. We've all sinned. The Bible said we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That verse of Scripture don't allow you to live like hell. That verse of Scripture don't allow you to mess up and mess up and mess up and just push it over to the side. You see, the Lord's are coming. And when He comes, He's looking for them that's right and washed in the blood of the Lamb. And they're the ones that's going to heaven. They ain't listen to me. People ain't going to heaven. If He comes, they mad and they're out here sleeping with somebody else's wife. Can I get an amen? Come on, praise God. They ain't going to heaven if he catches them out here drunk in the back of a vehicle. God ain't coming to get those reprobates. God's coming to get those that's right with God. Can I get an amen? Bless him, Lord. It's just like the word love. Did you know love's just a word? People don't know what love is. Most people nowadays are married for lust, not love. Boy, it's quite a bunch of if Christ hadn't loved you, He wouldn't have hung on the cross. Amen. It wasn't the nails that held Him. It was the love of God that He had for lost humanity like me and you. Come on! And we say we love Him. You know what the Bible said? They that say they love Him and keep not the commandments are a lie. And the truth's not in them. Can I get somebody but the Holy Amen? You say, I don't believe it. Right there's your problem. You don't believe. Can I get an amen? If you truly believe that the Lord's a coming, can I get an amen? You'd be doing everything in your power to get things right in your life so you can go to heaven. Can I get an amen? Come on. Do you believe He's a coming? Have I got anybody in this congregation that truly believes that one day the trumpet's going to sound and the Lord's a coming to get us? Can I get an amen? He said when he come, he would find faith upon the earth. If you examine yourself today and don't look at me, I don't care if you like me or not. It don't make a hill of beans to me. I'm not in this popularity. If you are, you're going to get your heart broke. You don't have to like me. You don't even have to like when I preach. You don't even have to agree with me. It ain't no matter a hill of beans. <coughs> But I tell you right now, you better be concerned about your soul. If you stop looking at everybody else that's done you wrong and everybody else that's around you this morning is sitting around you this morning, let me ask you something. If you examine yourself and you look into the mirror of the Word of God, where will you find yourself? 
Will you find yourself living in the faith of the Lord Jesus? Will you find yourself keeping the commandments? Will you find yourself living for God? Amen. Or are you making excuses? Still making excuses. How many times has the Word of God touched you? How many times has the old man of God preached something that pricked your heart? How many times? Amen. The Bible said, old Paul said, I've, been, I've come to you three times. And if you read on down through here, he still found them in sin. Lord's coming. Examine yourself. It ain't about me. You better know without a shadow of a doubt you're going to make it to heaven. This ain't about, I hope I get there. This ain't about, you know, people, I've heard people say this, and this is crazy. Thomas, you won't know until you get there whether you're going to make it or not. That's crazy. I had a fellow to tell me, he said, you won't know that you're truly saved until you make it to heaven. That man's a false prophet. You know what the Bible teaches me, sister? He said, you can know that you passed the death of your life or you have love for the bread. Is that Bible? Anybody know what the Bible says? Won't you holler, amen? I'm still in the book. Can I get an amen? You can know you're saved. You can know things is right with God. And praise God, you can know that when you pray, heaven rolls back and the angels stand in attention because you woke heaven up. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? God blesses us and He blesses us and He blesses us. He does things for us even though we're not worthy. And you know when God begins to deliver and, and do things for people, automatically they think they're right with God just because God's doing something good in your life. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said it rained on the just and the unjust. And God had no respect of person. God loved me just as much when I was an alcoholic as He does now. And did you know God touched in my life? Amen. And me a lost man. Can I get an amen? To the day I got saved. Come on! Praise God. Do you find yourself, amen, still doing wrong? Right time after time after time after time. I got some new. Get right with God. Amen. Bless him, Lord. You ain't give it all up. He said, Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven was in hand. I done preached. Repent. I ain't saying I'm sorry. It's all about the mouth service, Randy. That's all it's all about. Sister Renee, just somebody running that map and their life, they don't merely mean what they're saying. People say they love you and then turn right around and talk about you like a dog. That ain't love. Bless him, Lord. I ask you once to go over there and read the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, amen. I ask you to go do that. How many done that? Amen. How many actually Amen. read the book? How many applied it to your life? And have you examined yourself? Is that you? Amen. You women are sitting in this church this morning. You young ladies, I want to, I'm going to ask you something. I want you to go to the book of Proverbs come to my mind this morning and read the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs and find out if you are a virtuous woman. Can I get a name? Amen. I want you to read it and then come and tell me if that's you. And if it's not, praise God, amen, examine yourself. That's good preaching. I don't care who they're doing it. Can I get a name? Amen. You want your family safe? Live for God. You want things to happen in your life? You want to be blessed? Let God bless you by living for Him. Amen. Boy, it's got quite a bit. Bless you, Paul. At least I got you listening. Yeah. Rob, you better write all this down. Josh. <laughs> I asked Josh the other day, I said, what to preach on? He 
He didn't know. I said, what did Brother Josh Jones preach on? The natural baby got saved. I said, what did he preach on? He said, the book of Josh. 24 chapter 14, 15. I said, what did I preach on Sunday? The book of Joshua 24, verse 14 and 15. Amen. The same scripture is preached twice in this church. Amen. Come on. I'm not talking to Josh. Thank you, Lord. Hey, sometimes I preach and I couldn't tell you what I said. <laughs> but I'm saying this, you better take something home with you today. Because if the Lord comes in a few minutes, if the Lord comes tonight, Randy, when I get on that cloud, amen, you know what I'm going to be looking around? For your head. Amen? Come on! I want you to go to glory with me. I want to walk this Christian walk with you. Some of the highlights in my life, I look back the other day and I laugh till I cry. Amen? Come on! Some of the highlights in my life is when me and you went down the dirt of You're miserable inside all the time. There's something wrong. Yeah, amen. You need to examine yourself. You need to examine yourself. I'm, I'm going to hush. I, I'm. If it gets any more people, just roll their eyes. You know when people go to roll their eyes at me, I know they ain't paying attention, and it don't matter. They ain't gonna do no better than Noah. Amen. Come on. I'm telling you the truth. Huh? Can I go ahead and just say that? Paul knew this. If you go on over and, and I, I, I've done read all of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and I, I mean, I've been in this thing this week. And I'm going to tell you something. If you go and read about Paul, the tribulations and what he went through for the glory of God, you ain't went through nothing. Amen. The Bible even said you've not resisted to the shedding of blood. Can I get an amen? Ain't a one of you shed any blood for standing for Jesus. Amen. 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 Am
We grow up in the day and time now that little kids cuss their mom and dad. People have to call the law on 19 year old. My God help us Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. If my dad had to call the law, praise God, when I was 9 or 10 year old, he would have come to bring a body back because he'd have killed me. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. Amen. If my dad decided to quit me today, keep on 50 be 56 year old on birthday, first day of May. I'll be 56 year old. If my dad decided to quit me today, I'd stand and take it like a man because I've got reverence to my dad. Amen. He's my dad. And he taught me some respect. Amen. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Say, preacher, you don't, you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. But I'm here to tell you, I had enough common sense, kid. Praise God that I know better than back talk my dad. You know, it's left the church house. Right. Don't you know that's the first commandment with promise? The Bible said, children, obey your parents. Yeah. Reverence your mom and dad, amen. Yeah. That your days might be long upon the earth. Right. Come on. Amen. Preach like it's not about training up a child. Right. Training starts at an early age. Amen. 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 Kelsey, how about you singing? He knows my name. Amen. This morning, before she sings, I want to ask you a question. I just want to ask you a question. How long has it been? How long has it been since you've tasted the goodness of God? How long has it been since God spoke directly to your heart? How long has it been since you've been in fellowship with an Almighty God? Come on. How many times has God touched you and nothing changed? How many times, amen, that God sent somebody to you and nothing ever changed in your life? How many times? The Bible said, amen, examine yourself. If you look at yourself, don't look at nobody else. Don't look at Brother Jack, Thomas, or Cody, or me or Keith, or any of the rest of them. Look at yourself. I want you just to, amen, praise God. This I've never done this before. Did you know that? I've never in my in, in, in all my ministry, I have never done this. But i tell you what I'm going to do this morning. I'd like for everybody to close your eyes this morning. Just for a second. I want you to close your eyes. Don't you look around at nobody. Amen. I want you to close your eyes for just a second. Amen. Now, what I want you to do, you can't see nobody else. What I want you to do is to think about your life. God, am I living up to the Word of God? Am I doing what you want me to do? God, am I right with you? Lord, you're touching me this morning. What should I do? And you know what the Spirit says? It says, come. You know what the bride says? It says, come. You know what he said? Come and drink of the water of life freely. Come on, praise God. I believe there's somebody right here in the congregation of the righteous this morning that's got a desire for the things of God. You'd like to be touched one more time. How about it this morning while she sings? Amen. Examine yourself. It ain't about everybody else. It's about me, oh Lord, I, I standing in the need of prayer. My God, thank you, Jesus. It may be another. Come on, praise God. Sing it, sister. Amen. Oh, amen. I'm here to tell you this morning. It ain't about everybody else. Come on. Come on. Right now, God's calling you. Come on. Come on. It's from this day forth. Do you need to pray? Come on. Don't you let it stay no longer. Come on. Come on. It's for yourself. Get it for yourself. Come on. Come on. Come on this morning. Right now, why is she saying? He knows you. He said, I know what you have need of before you even ask. Just ask. And he said, all them that ask, he, he said, receiveth, amen. He said, they that come must come become believing that he is and that he is. 
a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him this morning. Come on. Step out right now and come on. That's what God said this morning. He said, you preach it. Let them examine yourself. He said, I'm there. Come on. Come on. Child, come on. Come on this morning. Break the binds that the devil's got you bound with you. Come on. He ain't got no power over you. Come on this morning. Come on. He don't have no power over you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on this morning. Come on right now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on right now. Come on. We've all failed to come short of the glory of God. But that don't mean we have to stay there. Can I get an amen? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on this morning. Come on. I come. As long as I'm in the arms of Jesus and I'm in the favor of God, I'll be all right. Amen. Amen. This morning, God loves you this morning. You know, Paul began to preach on over in Corinthians over in the first chapters and he began to tell them this. He said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things will come new. Amen. You know what that's telling me? That tells me your world changes. You may not be perfect in that new world, but praise God, the Bible says to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. It's a growing way. And once you find your way in this thing and you're doing steadfastly, praise God, my advice to you is stay as close as you can. Amen. Get in this thing because we're going on. Amen. I thank God, Kelly, God saved this young man. Amen. I thank God for that, Greg. I'm glad that God saved you, son. I'm glad you got a place in glory. Amen. Say, preacher, come on. I'm glad for that. Because when I go and it's coming and soon, it ain't going to be far off. I'm eating that. Amen. I'm meeting there. If God's a touch in your heart this morning, it ain't because He's mad at you. It's because He loves you. How many of you today love these babies? How many love these babies? Do you love them? If this in here crawls out in the middle of the curve down here, and I know there's a car going to run over. Everything in my car to get her out of the road. You see, that's love. But if you notice the harms are coming to them, and praise God, you leave them with laying there in the road and something runs over, you don't love them. It's just words. Yeah. 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 This morning's right. God, God loves you. He's getting us ready to go home. He said, Preacher, you've lost your mind. I've been crazy for a long time. But I know what's coming. Yeah. I know what's coming. You see, Paul didn't go back to these people three times because he was mad at them. Paul went because he loved them. Paul preached because he loved them. I read in the Word of God because of what manner of man Paul was. He abode in that city for three Sabbath days. They tried their best to bring him off. He abode for three Sabbath days till some of them believed. Amen. I love you. I appreciate you. 
I thank God He's a moving. But it ain't about lip service. Don't come and tell me, hey amen, that, that you got saved such and such a year and all this stuff. Are you living for Jesus? Amen. There's a boy who told me he's having a flat, a meeting over in the flatwoods, and me and him putting up hay. I asked him, I said, Are you saved? He said, My grandma can remember the day I got saved. And my grandma told me the day I went to the altar and I got saved. I said, Really? Your grandma told you. I said, Are you saved? I ain't talking to grandma, I'm talking to you. Are you saved? And he got quiet. Had a Bible went on for about a week, week and a half. And I was getting news, people's getting saved, more people's getting right with God. I didn't know it was him. Next time I saw him, he come up and he said, Preacher, I don't have to ask my grandma. He said, I pray. Come on. Come on. You better get it for yourself. That's the reason Paul was happy. He could answer for himself. Listen, church. My main goal in life is let's go to heaven. It's all that matters to me, Randy. Amen. It's all that matters to me. I love you. I thank God for you. I thank God that you're sitting in the house of God. And I know God has got something for you. I know. I know. You know I'm crazy. Children, I love you. And I pray to God that God will bless you. But if you need something this morning, come on. It ain't about everybody else. Amen. You see, I could look at Lester and say, I, I know what Lester needs, but I don't know what Lester needs. I don't know what Keith needs, I don't know what Rick needs. I don't know what you need. But I know what I need. When I'm in need, I know it. I got up this morning to feed them there at the house and did a joke. And my old colts I had out in there in the pasture, they were behind the barn standing in the creek, humped up, getting out of the wind. <laughs> So I just got to feel them sorry for him and put him in the barn where he's born. Wind wasn't blowing. One of them coughing and nose are running. I believe he's got pneumonia. He's sick. But you see, I know what he needed. So I went to the cabin, got me a big needle, and I gave him a shot this morning. You see, God can fix. Whatever's wrong in your life, right. he knows what he can do for you. I love you, and I appreciate everybody that's here. It's such a joy to see you, Amen. Amen. And I, I'm glad you'd come, sister, because I want to see Caleb. I, I've been wanting to see him for a week. Uh, I, I tell you, I ain't I miss that. But you know, God knows what we need. God knows how to put it together. Examine your seat. Your seat can be of the faith. Amen. When you get in the faith, walk on to Jesus. Let's get this thing and help one another. Paul had people that helped him. Read it. Yeah. I could have got into that, but I'd have to preach a whole different message this morning. This is one God gave me. Went right along with what you were teaching. Right to the left. I thought, now I know why I've been reading you. I appreciate you. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. And I appreciate those that made it out on this snowy morning this morning. Amen. I had a desire to be at the house of God. Now it's slick at my house. Me and Melissa talked early this morning. And the water well, hadn't even froze in the in the driveway or in the yard in the in the road. I went to the barn and fed Billy Joe. When I come back out, it's like a, a skating rink, and it's still up. But I'm blessed. God let me make it here, and He's gonna let me make it back home. I love you, and I appreciate you. You ever need me? You got my number? Bless you, Lord. Let's help each one or other make We're going to heaven, amen. Somebody get you a song. <laughs>
Lord. Come on, Melissa. I want to ask Jerry to share with these other children what you told Caleb about praying and talking to God. Come on, Jerry. Because they weren't here to hear it Wednesday night. When you shared it was us. Come on, <clears throat> Melissa, the talking about it. I don't know if it's this past Wednesday or Wednesday before. I, uh, I was reading some scripture and I, I, I told him, I said, uh, I called Greg, I guess it was that Wednesday night after, after y'all got home. And told him I, I wanted to tell Caleb something that I uh, didn't get to before they left and they just put Caleb on the phone I told Caleb, I said I'll, I said, you remember, I said, you always pray I told Caleb, I said, you don't have to bow your head you don't have to get down on your knees to always pray, I said, you just talk to God and I said, don't ever, ever quit talking to God I said, you can talk to God 24-7 I said, don't ever quit doing that I told him another thing. I said, don't listen to the voice in your head, but I said, listen to the one that's way down deep inside. I said, you listen to that voice and what it tells you. And I said, you do those two things. And I told him, I said, you'll be all right. And uh, that's good advice for for me and for everybody sitting in this church this morning. But I I thought, you know, I don't... I probably told Carly something along those same lines when she was saved, I, I, and I don't remember what I told her, but I, I just thought, you know, for for Caleb, as, as much as the Lord was dealing with him after talking to Greg, and, you know, if we could ever one walk out of here this morning to know and after examining yourself and knowing what you believe, walk out of here praying and listening to that voice deep down inside. It don't matter if you're 5 or 50 this morning and sitting here. Don't, don't quit praying. And don't quit listening to that voice. And if, 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 you, if you don't pray and you ain't got that voice, I, they give you a chance to fix it this morning. But, uh, but that, that's what I told you. And uh, like I say, I believe it's good advice for all of us. Amen. <laughs> I get you a song in. <laughs> if you need to pray, come on. It ain't too late. <coughs> I'm everybody sing it one time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, don't so 